The year is 1972. The Godfather just released in cinemas. The first handheld calculator is released. Apollo 17 launches and captures the first full images of Earth. And a video game franchise that will go on to be a household name is born. Remember last week when I told you this? Bushnell and Dabney would go on to incorporate Syzygy Engineering as Atari, but we'll get to that later in the series. After some mediocre success with the first ever video game computer space and incorporating under the name Atari, they rented their first offices in Sunnyvale, California and hired engineer Alan Alcorn. Bushnell would then attend a demonstration of the Magnavox Odyssey, the first ever at home video game console. Magnavox presents Odyssey, the electronic game of the future. Odyssey easily attaches to any brand TV, black and white or color, to create a closed circuit electronic playground. Odyssey, a new dimension for your television. Now at your Magnavox dealer. He's listed in the yellow pages. Afterwards, Bushnell would task Alcorn with redeveloping the Magnavox's tennis game into a coin-operated version as a test project. Alcorn didn't just remake the game, he added his own improvements like increasing the speed of the ball the longer you played. And so, Pong was born. In August 1972, the first Pong prototype was installed at a local bar called Andy Capps Tavern, where Atari had previously supplied pinball machines and a version of computer space. After a few days of installation though, the machine ran into some technical difficulties. Upon inspection, Alcorn found that it was caused by a jam coin mechanism which was overflowing with quarters. At its peak, there were 35,000 Pong units across the United States of America. But we should probably address the elephant in the room. You might be thinking, didn't Atari steal the idea for Pong from Magnavox? Because that's exactly how the team at Magnavox felt. In April 1974, Magnavox filed a lawsuit against Atari for alleged infringement of patents for electronic ping pong. The case was supported by proof of concept documents dating back to 1966 and a signed guest book that showed Bushnell had played the Odyssey's electronic ping pong game prior to releasing Pong. Eventually, the case was settled out of court with Bushnell paying 1.5 million US dollars to Magnavox to license out the game concept, as well as having to hand over information for all Atari products publicly announced or released in the following year. Afterwards, Magnavox went after other Pong copycats and continued to win their court cases. And Atari? They may have delayed the announcement of their Atari 2600 console by a few months just so they didn't have to hand over documents to Magnavox. So the next time you see any video game drama, just remember the industry was built on it. Unlike computer space, Pong has had a long-lasting presence, which means there is a variety of records to its name like the Guinness World Record for the most people playing a single game of Pong, where a program tracked the tightest groupings of laser pointers to control the paddles. And there's also the largest game of Pong, which took place on the side of a building. The original Pong machines could have a set high score of 15, with future machines having a varying high score limit. I don't think I'll be breaking any records today, but let's give it a go. Here we are with classic Pong. My goal is to beat the computer on hard. That is my goal. Let's go normal at first for a little warm up and then we'll try hard. Okay, here we go. I'm on the left. Ah. Yes, we're already ahead. Let's go. Two, zero. If this is anything like classic. I hit it out. I hit it out. If this is anything like classic Pong, it should be first to 15. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds like a soccer ball when it goes off the sides. I don't think the original Pong sounded quite like that. What? What am I doing? I'm winning again. <laughs> oh, oh, this went until 11. 11 is a weird number to go to, is it not? I am going to try hard on this one. I don't know if the means the ball is going to go faster or if the computer is just smarter. Oh, and the computer is already winning. Oh dear. The computer doesn't even have to do anything. I can just make myself lose. No. My trigonometry is obviously terrible. I'm trying to like work out the angles where it's going to be and I'm always wrong. 
Well, that went well. I am not good enough to beat the computer on hard. We have just found out that the rallies were so long in that. I don't know how you were meant to get it to miss. I Somehow I got it to miss twice. I'm not sure how. I think by not winning and not being good at Pong, I gave a more authentic experience to what Pong was like in the 70s. I think one of the reasons that games like this become so popular is that they are difficult to win. It makes you want to keep playing, keep playing, keep putting quarters in the machine so that you can beat it. Because if it was easy and you just won, you would just walk away and you wouldn't keep playing. Even though Pong is one of the most recognizable games today, I don't think I can give it a Golden Years Award out of good faith because of all the controversy. So we're just gonna have to shelf Pong without the Golden Year Award. I hope you learned as much as I did when researching for this video. If you think you can guess what the top game of 1973 will be, make sure to leave it in the comments below before the next installment of Game of the Year.